This is Pikmin 2 without the whistle. All right, here we go. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, they're all gonna die, no! I'm gonna be trying to beat the entire game without using the whistle once. That means rounding up Pikmin manually, insta-kill environmental hazards, and ridiculously hard boss fights. I won't be 100% in the game, but I will be paying off the debt, beating every cave, and rescuing Louie. And just to make things a little more interesting, I'm gonna be giving myself a 15 day time limit, and banning the use of bitter spray because it's completely broken. Now, Pikmin 2 is usually regarded as the hardest game in the series, and for good reason. The late game caves are completely insane. So I don't even know if this is gonna be possible. But there's only one way we're gonna find out, so let's hop into the start of the run and see if you can beat Pikmin 2 without using the whistle. So right off the bat, the game wants you to use the whistle, so you can call the red Pikmin and use them to kill this dwarf Bulborb. There is no way you can get around this. You can't do damage to it, and it can't do damage to the Pikmin. It's basically a cutscene, and I won't be counting it as a whistle use because the game is forcing you to do it. So, the first two days are basically tutorial days. Day one, you just collect the battery and the day ends. And day two, you explore the emergency cave, collect this piece of the globe, and then the day ends. There's basically no enemies and it's not exciting, so we're skipping them. Let's go on to day three, where the run actually starts. So the first thing I notice is that it seems easier rounding up Pikmin by bumping into them than it was in Pikmin 1. And when they finish doing a task, instead of just standing around like idiots like they did in Pikmin 1, they actually come back to you, which saves so much time. The Pikmin overall just seem way less stupid in this game. Well, sometimes. But yeah, we basically murder everything on our way to the first cave and head on down. And I was a little scared because I remember the caves in Pikmin 2 being hard. And then I remembered that purple Pikmin can do this. We basically sweep through the entire cave with no problems until we reach the boss. And I was not looking forward to this boss because I knew this bitch would be a problem. You're supposed to fight her by throwing Pikmin on her face and then calling them back right before she tosses them into the arena. Or else this happens. But I can't call them back so I can't stop her from doing this. So any Pikmin that go on her face are going to die. In the first game, I solved this type of problem by just going back to base and getting more Pikmin. But I can't do that because I'm in a cave, so I have to beat her with the Pikmin I came with. And that's exactly what I do. While we do lose 20 red Pikmin, the fight really isn't that bad. I just spam her with reds, and she goes down. So we leave with our prize, and we head to the next cave, the White Flower Garden. Where we find white Pikmin, of course, and quickly make our way to the boss, a burrowing Snagret. And while this guy caused us issues in the first game, with the power of purple Pikmin, we completely obliterate his butthole. This is because the enemies in Pikmin 2 generally have less health than in Pikmin 1, and because purples do two times the damage of a regular Pikmin. Yeah, purples are busted. Either way, we leave with the five-man knapsack for our troubles. And as the day ends, I realize one thing. Nighttime is not nearly as much of a factor in this game as it was in Pikmin 1. If a Pikmin was doing a task in the first game and the day ended, the Pikmin would all die. There was no way I could stop them from doing a task because I couldn't use the whistle. But in Pikmin 2, if you go into a cave, any Pikmin that aren't in your party will be transported safely to the Onion. Which is exactly what I do here. These Pikmin would have all died. But I quickly make a run for the cave, go in, and leave. And they're all safe. On to day four. So day four is a bit of a waste. We can't progress anymore in the level without yellows or blues. And we can't get yellows or blues until we get this final piece of the globe and unlock Perplexing Pool. So we basically do that, get some other random garbage and move on to the next day. So we start off Perplexing Pool by coming across another enemy that gave us so much trouble in the first game and then proceed to fuck his ass up. We then come across the yellows, which again, just like with the reds, forces you to use the whistle to get their attention. Which again, I won't be counting. So we sprout a bunch of yellow Pikmin and get to the Citadel of Spiders with only seconds to spare. 
The Citadel of Spiders is another easy cave, so we'll skip right to the boss, which actually happens to be another enemy that caused us a bunch of trouble in Pikmin 1. BD Longlegs the problem with him in the first game is that once Pikmin were shaken off his body, they would continuously attack his feet, doing no damage and getting stomped all over. Thankfully in Pikmin 2, when he lifts his feet, there's a split second where you can get your Pikmin back. And also, his health is way lower. Look at this shit. 5000 HP in Pikmin 1 compared to 1300 in Pikmin 2. He just goes down so quick, it's not really even a challenge. But, either way, we collect the key and get the hell out. And with day 5 over, the debt is already 40% completed. On to day 6. So day 6, we finally find the blue Pikmin. And again, we are forced to use the whistle. Same as the other types. And again, I will not be counting it. My plan today was to find the blue Pikmin and complete the Bulblat's kingdom. But these little bitches had something else in mind. I threw my blue Pikmin at them and then realized they were way too slow to actually kill them. But they kept chasing anyways and I couldn't get their attention so I had to manually kill everyone myself. Which took forever. In fact, it took just enough time that I couldn't even get to the Bulblat's kingdom. So it'll have to wait till tomorrow. Day 7. And the first thing we do on day 7 is go to the Bulblat's kingdom which we completely destroy. Not having the whistle hasn't really even been a factor so far because all the enemies just go down so quickly. And when they die so quickly, it means they don't have a chance to attack, which was my biggest weakness in the first game because I couldn't call my Pikmin back to avoid the attack. Just look at the Emperor Ballblats, for example. In the first game, he was a major issue because I would throw Pikmin on him, he would shake them off and then just destroy their booties. But in Pikmin 2, he dies so quickly he can't even get an attack off. In Pikmin 2, Emperor Bulblats has 1300 HP. Do you want to know how much HP he has in Pikmin 1? 30,000. He goes from an unstoppable monster in Pikmin 1 to an absolute joke in Pikmin 2. Anyways, we collect Forge Courage, which makes Olimar resistant to fire, which will definitely come in handy later. So, after the Bulblat's Kingdom, we make our way to the Snaggard Hole. And then this troll takes out half my White Pikmin. We then obliterate another Snaggard and make it to the cave with only seconds to spare. As you would expect, the Snaggard Hole is filled with Snaggards. And I just take them out one after another. So, yeah, that's like all my purple Pikmin gone. Anyways, on to the boss. The Pileated Snaggard is a pain in the ass. He doesn't really kill too many of my Pikmin, he just takes a long time to kill. After he burrows back into the ground, the Pikmin all just kind of stand there, and then when he pops back up, they charge him. And since they charge him so quickly, he just goes right back underground. And he just kept doing this until we finally killed him. We end up losing 20 Pikmin, a small price to pay for the Justice Alloy. An item that allows Olmar and Louis to take more damage. And as you'll see, that'll definitely come in handy later in the run. So now with every cave in the Awakening Wood completed, we go back to the Valley of Repose and unlock the rest of the level with our newly acquired blue and yellow Pikmin. And as we make our way to the subterranean complex, this motherfucker pulls this shit. Fifty Pikmin with one boulder. Quite possibly the greatest shot I've ever seen. I was very close to rage quitting at this point, but I powered through. And don't you worry, the rage quits are coming. Because from here on out, Pikmin 2's caves become complete bullshit. Let's look at sublevel 2 of the subterranean complex for example. So, I don't know if you know this, but Pikmin 2 loves doing this little thing called randomly dropping bombs from the sky. It's normally super annoying, but without the whistle, it's absolutely devastating. The only way to save them from these bombs is to call them back with the whistle, but I can't do that. And what's even more devious about these bombs is that there's three separate conditions to trigger them. Some will fall only when Louie and Olimar are walking by, some will only fall when Pikmin are walking by, and some will only fall when Pikmin are carrying an object. Like this one here that completely destroys all my white Pikmin. And it was at this point I had my first reset of the run. 
And even after the reset, it didn't get much better. Because these bombs make this run so difficult. Like, just look at this. I tried taking out one of these balloon fots, one of them throws a bomb, and I can't do anything but just watch my Pikmin die. And if you want to see more bombs, take a look at sublevel 5. Look at this diabolical bullshit. Like, this is just evil. I try running through the stage to trigger as many bombs as I can, but like I said, some only trigger when Pikmin are carrying parts. Luckily, this time, my white Pikmin are able to escape unharmed. These white Pikmin, however, aren't so lucky. Sublevel 6 sees more bombs and more resets. And then Sublevel 7 sees our first encounter with a grattling groink. These assholes shoot missiles out of their mouth and will respawn if you kill them. Thankfully, we make it to the next hole just before one respawns. On to the boss. And just as you would expect with this challenge, the man at Lades is a complete bitch. You're supposed to fight this boss by throwing Pikmin on his mid-section, calling them back before he shades them off, and then running and hiding from his gunfire. But since I can't call them back, the Pikmin just get flung everywhere and it's basically open season for the man at Lades. After he obliterates half my Pikmin, I finally bring him down with only 20 sits remaining. And for all this Pikmin blood spent, we get a light bulb. We then spend the rest of the day making our way to the Frontier Cavern, where we meet maybe one of the most devastating enemies in the entire run, the Doodlebug. A look-alike to the iridescent flint beetle with one major difference. Wherever they go, they leave a cloud of poisonous gas. And while they're only a minor annoyance in regular playthroughs of the game, in a playthrough where I can't use the whistle, they are destroyers of worlds. And on sublevel 1 of the Frontier Cavern, there are three of them. And I'm being 100% serious when I say this, this may be the sublevel that caused me the most trouble in the entire game. I tried so many times to get all the parts, but every time I would lose half my Pikmin and have to restart. The problem is, these guys are invisible until they spawn, and they can spawn wherever, including right in the middle of your squad. And once a poisonous cloud hits the Pikmin, I can't save them. Like I said, I tried so many times at this point, I just gave up and made a run for the exit. Luckily, we don't really have to deal with them for the rest of the cave, but we do have to deal with these assholes. The Anode Beetle. Which again, are really annoying without the whistle. They are impervious to all damage, except when flipped over on their bats. But just like with the Armor Cannon Beetle in Pikmin 1, you can get in a situation where you throw all your Pikmin, and they keep chasing the Anno Beetle, doing no damage. And that's what happens here. I throw all my purples, they don't kill it in time, and I pay the price. On the next sublevel, we find the Brute Knuckles, which is probably the most important item in this run. The Brute Knuckles allow Olimar and Louie to deal more damage with their punches. And with how difficult some of the later caves in Pikmin 2 become, we're definitely going to need to utilize that. We then come across our first set of Ballmen, which unfortunately we can't use because we can't whistle them. Which trust me, is gonna fuck us later. But anyways, let's move on to the boss of this cave. Another Empress Ballblatz. But this one is so much worse than the one we found in the Hole of Beasts. For one, she is almost double the HP. And two, it spawns these little assholes. And while they die in one hit, they also kill your Pikmin extremely quickly. But honestly, it's the HP that's the problem. The first one we faced had such little HP that I was able to burn her down without losing too many Pikmin. And the cave was also so much easier, so I had way more Pikmin to work with. I only have 45 now. So the strategy I came up with was to just throw one Pikmin on her face, let it do as much damage as possible, and then watch it die. For some reason, when you only throw one Pikmin, she won't shake it off right away which allows it to do more damage than you'd expect. I basically did this until she was low enough for me to throw all my Pikmin on her face at once and finish her off. Oh... Fuck. So this time, I used Almar to clear out the enemies, giving me 7 more Pikmin to work with. And with this strategy, every Pikmin is gonna count. So, I did the same thing, throw one Pikmin on her face at a time. Until she had very little health left, and then just swarmed her with purples. I finish the cave with only 24 Pikmin remaining, and we leave with a repugnant appendage. 
which increases our movement speed. Something that will also come in handy. So day 9, I go back to the perplexing pool and work on unlocking the paths to the shower room and Glutton's kitchen. I bring over some yellows to work on this electric fence, and make a horrible decision to attack this toady bloister with all my blue pikmin. Yep, you heard me right, that's all my blue pikmin. Every last one of them trapped attacking the bloister. And I can't free them because I have no other pikmin that can reach the bloister without drowning. And the day is about to end, and they're all gonna die if I don't save them. So, I rush down the fence as fast as I can, and then realize I need blue pikmin to get into the shower room. So, I make a mad dash back to base, grab as many yellows as I can, and rush over to the glutton's kitchen. Getting there with only 8 seconds left to spare, and saving all the blue pikmin from a horrible nocturnal death. Problem is, since I had so many blues attacking the bloister, I was only able to enter the cave with 62 pikmin. But honestly, it wasn't a problem, because Glenn's Kitchen is a joke. There's almost nothing in this cave that can hurt your Pikmin, since the main enemy type is Breadbugs. So I easily sweep through the cave and collect the Dream Material, which gives us electrical resistance. And I realize we've already completed one of our goals, we paid off the debt. Now we just have the easy parts left, like finishing every cave and saving Louie. So, we start off day 10 with the goal of completing the submerged castle, which, just as its name would suggest, is submerged underwater, so you can only bring blue pikmin to the cave. And at this point in the run, I only had 33 blue pikmin left, so I spend the first part of the day trying to gather as many blue pikmin as possible. After all was said and done, I only managed to get 63 blue pikmin in the cave. And that's a problem, because this cave is going to be fucked. For one, this asshole drops down if you've been on the floor for too long, and two, you're supposed to use the Ballman found in this cave to take care of hazards that Blue Pikmin can't. But we can't use Ballman, so I have to use Blue Pikmin for everything. And as you would expect, that does not go well. Right off the bat, I lose half of my Blue Pikmin and have to restart. And then this happens. Yep, that's another restart. I end up losing 13 blue pikmin to another blowhog, punch this guy to death, and make it to the next floor. And the next floor is where we have our first encounter with the Water Raid, who I try my best to distract while my pikmin bring back the treasure. <gasps> no! No, 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 no! <laughs> so I make it down to the next floor, find some white pikmin, immediately lose them, and then find out that blue pikmin and electricity do not mix. That's another restart. I then quickly learn the same lesson again. Restart. I finally start to make some progress on this floor, and then this asshole comes and ruins the party. So I make it to sub-level 4, where those white Pikmin would have really come in handy. I only have 25 Pikmin left in general, so I don't even know if this cave is going to be possible. And this isn't going to help. That's a restart. I basically abandoned all items on this floor and just make a beeline for the exit. And thankfully the final boss of this cave is really easy once you get purples. So we beat the boss and get the professional noisemaker, all with 21 Pikmin remaining. Day 11 we head to the shower room, which honestly is a pretty uneventful cave. We just kind of plowed through it and then faced the boss, which I was a little worried about because I didn't want a repeat of the Toadie Bloister incident, where all my Pikmin were attacking him doing no damage and I can't get them off. But it pretty much goes off without a hitch and I kill him with my last couple Pikmin. And we get the Amplified Amplifier, which is a whistle upgrade so it's completely useless to us. And with that, we have completed every single cave aside from the last three caves in the Wistful Wilds. And these caves are gonna be complete hell. They're all over 10 floors long and have some of the toughest bosses in the entire game waiting at the end. I honestly don't know if this is gonna be possible, but we gotta try anyways. I basically spend day 12 unlocking all the routes in the Wistful Wilds, so I have full access to every cave. And on day 13, I jump right into the Hole of Heroes, a 15 floor behemoth. Which honestly starts off not too bad. We take out another Pileated Snagret, I try escorting some Pikmin and they take the stupidest route possible, and then this fucking floor happens. Like what the fuck is this? 
This is peak Pikmin 2 bullshit. Not only is there a ranging Bloister and Cannon Beetles, but rots fall from the fucking ceiling too. With the whistle, this floor is tough. Without it, it's almost impossible. I basically had to reset the floor until I had a favorable layout, and then use the president as a distraction until I could get my Pikmin away from the Bloister. And then just hope to god I was able to dodge the boulders. Somehow, I managed to escape only six Pikmin dying, but I had to leave the treasures behind. And then to make things better, on the next floor, our favorite little friend returns. Yeah, that's another reset. I just sprout all the Pikmin I can and then bum rush for the exit. So remember how I said the Brute Knuckles would come in handy? Well, we'll be using them a lot in this cave. And I think Emperor Bulblats heard me talking shit about him earlier in this video because he gets his revenge. More than once, actually. And then there's sub-level 11, another Empress Bulblats. I wanted to see if I could kill her with all my Pikmin and a spicy spray, but it did not go well. So I decided with only 67 Pikmin left that I would skip this floor. The next floor is another recovery floor. I find some beetles, and they drop some very nice things for me. So I go looking for some more and get rewarded for my curiosity. Honestly, fuck this game. <laughs> yeah, fucking right. The next floor doesn't seem too bad, just a bunch of dweevils. I can kill them all myself. Okay, I think I'm just gonna leave. And then we have the final boss, and for some reason, there's just a bunch of fucking jellyfish here. I try fighting them, and then the raging lawn lights comes down at the perfect time. He seems scary, but honestly, he's easier than BD from the first game because I'm actually able to gather my Pikmin when he lifts up his legs. That being said, he still obliterates half my Pikmin, but thankfully I have just enough to grab the part. So I finish the Hall of Heroes with 32 Pikmin left and both captains on life support. On to the Cavern of Chaos. And honestly, the Cavern of Chaos can suck my dick. Look at this floor. Look at this shit. <laughs> honestly, it actually goes pretty well, but still, this is fucked. And the next floor is not much better. There are three fiery ball blasts which I have to kill all by hand. Yep, and this is a thing. The floor with three emperor ball blasts is actually pretty easy. I just get them to eat bomb rods over and over again. And then there's this floor with the two gadolin groints and 7,000 dwarf ball borbs, which honestly wasn't too hard, but just took forever. And then on sub level nine, I found this part which I could easily sneak past this bomb guy. Easily sneak past this bomb guy. Easily sneak past. okay, fuck it. Okay, now we come to a boss that I wasn't even sure if we could beat. The Segmented Cropster. This guy is a fucking nightmare. He rolls around in a ball trying to crush your Pikmin. The way you're supposed to beat him is by getting him to roll into the wall. So he gets stunned, then you throw your Pikmin on his weak point and call them back before he gets up. But since I couldn't call them back, this happens. They basically just chase him until they die. As I mentioned before, the way I would get around this in the first game was by going back to base and getting more Pikmin. But I can't do that here. I have to beat him with the Pikmin I have, and that proved to be incredibly difficult. I would usually only get him to half health and be completely out of usable Pikmin. And this caused me to reset so many times. I needed to be perfect with every one of my throws because every Pikmin that missed wouldn't be doing damage and would be destined to die. But the falling rots from the roof made this so much harder than it should have been. But then it happened. I landed nearly every Pikmin toss and burned through his health bar. And even though he knocked them off, I came back with reinforcements and finished the fight. One cave left. But this cave just happens to be the hardest in the game. And at the end of it is the hardest boss. Not just in the game, but maybe in the entire series. The Titan Dweevil. But before we talk about him, let's go through the cave first. Just look at this cave. It has bomb guys, bombs that fall from the ceiling, and this little fun surprise. Oh. I just love it so much. Love it so much. And then we have sub level four, 
which I'm convinced was designed by a psychopath. I make good use of the brute knuckles again and kill every one of them by hand. We go down the hole and then find some more fun on sub-level 5. I'm having fun. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Floor 6 somehow isn't a complete disaster. And then there's sub-level 7, which must have been created by the same guy who created sub-level 4. Look at this. Look at this. What am I supposed to do here? I'll tell you what I do. I fucking run. Oh, and of course the hole is blocked off. How fun. So I have no choice but to take one Pikmin on the mission of a lifetime. And then just wait while he breaks open the hole. I get to sub-level 10 and realize I have like three blue Pikmin and just say fuck it and leave. And I think on sub-level 11, I just start to lose my mind a bit because I don't think this is how you're supposed to play Pikmin. Well, that sucks. On sub-level 12, I get maybe the luckiest asteroid strike of all time and then go down to the next floor. Hmm, this seems fun. All right. On to the final boss. Okay, so let's talk about the Titan Dweebel for a second. Usually the strategy for this guy is to fight him with as many yellows as possible, because all the Titan Dweebel's attacks are elemental. He has a fire attack, a poison attack, a water attack, and an electrical attack. And the reason you fight him with yellows is because the electrical attack is the only one that will insta-kill, and yellows are immune to it. And then you just use the whistle to save them from the other attacks. But since we can't do that, this strategy goes completely out the window. Which means I don't really have a strategy, so let's just try and fight them. Ah, well, that's gonna be a problem. So after we fight them a couple times, I realize that some moves are gonna be harder to dodge than others. The fire attack is almost impossible to dodge because it happens instantly. The poison is also pretty hard, but easier than the fire because it's slower. And the electrical and water attacks seem to be the easiest because they give you a lot of time to react. So I think the way we go about doing this is by removing the flare cannon first, then the comedy bomb, then the shock therapist, and then finally the monster pump. But first, we're gonna have to come back because I'm not gonna beat this guy with 40 Pikmin. It's just not happening. So I go through the hardest cave in the game again, and then this time come back with 92 Pikmin. And in the beginning, I was having a little bit of success. My Pikmin weren't immediately dying to the flare cannon because I was mostly using reds. And I was actually able to knock it off at one point. But that's as far as I got. You have to understand that taking one of these parts off takes forever. And every time he attacks, I have to manually gather up my Pikmin and try to dodge it. Which usually leads to a couple Pikmin dying every time he attacks. So, it's just a battle of attrition, and it's a battle that I lose. By the time I get one part off, I have only 38 Pikmin left. And I need to get all four parts off him. I tried for hours, but I wasn't even getting close. I actually tried using the whistle for a bit to see if this fight was even going to be possible if I played it perfectly. And that's the part that broke me. I knocked off the flare cannon and the comedy bomb and then tried attacking the shock therapist. And then this happened. He fires the water cannon straight through the shock therapist. Any Pikmin attacking it are instantly covered in water and will die. You can't avoid this, he fires it straight through the part, so anytime you attack, your Pikmin are going to die. At this point, I was so frustrated. I had just spent hours tackling the three hardest caves in the game, and I just had one more obstacle to overcome. But it just couldn't be done, it was impossible. Even if I could somehow get two parts off of him, I couldn't overcome this. Not without the whistle. And even though I'd come so far, this would stop me. Pikmin 2 cannot be beaten without the whistle. At least, that's what I was planning on writing. The night before I was going to write the script for this video, an idea came to me. You see, I made the crucial mistake of thinking I had to knock all four parts off the Titan Dweevil. I mean, I do, but just not all in the same run. If I can knock a part off and bring it back to the ship and then leave the cave and come back, then maybe he wouldn't have that part anymore. It would essentially be like saving my progress in the fight, and every time I came back, I would have more Pikmin. For a second, it made this fight seem possible. But there was only one problem. 
I didn't even know if it worked that way. I could collect the part, leave, and then come back, and he could still have it for all I know. But there was only one way I was gonna find out, and that is to try it. So I started grinding attempts, trying to knock off as many parts as I could. And I learned something pretty quickly. Once I knocked the flare cannon off, I could attack the comedy bomb while he was doing his water attack. Which allowed my Pikmin to do plenty of damage because his water attack goes on for so long. And with this strategy, I was able to do something that I hadn't done in hours of playtime. Knock off two parts in one attempt. And even though I only had 14 Pikmin, I luckily had two purple, so I was able to get the part back. So I had collected the flare cannon and the comedy bomb, and then left the cave. And since I potentially only had the shock therapist and monster pump left, I grabbed all the blue and yellow Pikmin I could, and went back into the dream den for a third time hoping that my assumptions were right. And they were. He only had the monster pump and shock therapist left. This was now possible. And I know what you're thinking. Didn't you say it wasn't possible because he shoots water through the shock therapist when you attack it? And to that, I would say I'm dumb. That is what happens when you attack the shock therapist first. But if you attack the monster pump first, nothing happens. You can just knock it off making it totally doable. So that's what I did. I grabbed some yellows and started attacking the monster pump. And right before I knocked it off, this happened. I lost all my yellows. So even though I was about to knock off the pump, I was not in the clear yet. So I knocked it off and by some random grace of God, they didn't all get vaporized. And I really wish I still had those yellows because even if I had won, this fight would be over. But it wasn't, especially since the electrical tats get a lot faster when the part is about to fall off. But it wasn't enough. The Titan Dweevil was finished. I had done it. I had beaten Pikmin 2 without the whistle. Every bullshit cave, every impossible boss, all conquered without the fucking whistle. Oh, and by the way, it's day 16, so I didn't beat it in 15 days. But who cares? This game is bullshit. Fuck Pikmin 2.